Greetings students. Today we are going to learn about one of Russia's leading oil company Rosneft. Let us know this company in a much better way. Rosneft is an integrated oil company majority owned by the government of Russia. Rosneft is headquartered in Moscow's Balchug district near the Kremlin across the Moscow River. Rosneft became Russia's leading extraction and refinement company after purchasing assets of former oil giant Yukos at state-run auctions. In March 2013, after completing acquisition of TNK BP, Rosneft became the largest publicly traded oil company. Rosneft conducts oil and gas exploration and production activities on Sakhalin Island, Siberia, Timin Pechora field and in southern Russia including Chechnya, it owns and operates two refineries. The refinery in Tuaps on the Black Sea focuses on refining high gravity oil from western Siberia. Another plant in Komsomolsk on Amur is the easternmost refinery in Russia. The Komsomolsk refinery benefits from its technological integration with Nakhorka Neft product while the Tuaps refinery is noted for its favorable location on the Black Sea coast and is part of an integrated complex with Tua Sein Neft product. Rosneft operates shipping Arkhangel Skep Neft product pipeline and marketing companies. As of 29 December 2006, the company's market value was 83.908 billion US dollars. Rosneft net income fell 20% for the first quarter of 2009 from 2.56 billion dollars to 2.06 billion dollars due to the weakness of oil price. Rosneft is 75.16% owned by the Russian state, BP, a British multinational oil and gas company headquartered in London, England. The United Kingdom owns a 19.75% stake while around 5% of the shares are in free float. Rosneft was established in 1993 as a unitary enterprise on the basis of assets previously held by Rosneft Gas the successor to the Soviet Union's Ministry of Oil and Gas. During the early 90s, almost all Russian local oil companies and refineries were extracted from Rosneft to form 10 integrated companies. Later, their number was halved as a result of acquisitions. On 29 September 1995, a resolution of the government of Russia, 971 transformed Rosneft into an open joint stock company. In October 1998, the Russian government appointed Sergei Bogdanchikov as president. The company had only two obsolete refineries in addition to several low productive and poorly managed oil producing assets. Several plans for the company's privatization were formed in the late 1990s, but due to competition equal influential pretenders, they were never fulfilled. Rosneft increased oil output from 98.56 billion BBL, 13.47 million tons in 2000 to 148.26 million BBL, 20.27 million tons in 2004. In 2001, the company became Russia's official representative on projects with production sharing agreements PSA. In 2003, it began production at the Adi block near the Caspian Sea in western Kazakhstan. In 2004, the Rosneft agreed to merge with Gazprom. The merger plans were discarded in May 2005, allegedly because Bongdan Chikov did not wish to take a lesser role in the integrated company, answering to Gazprom CEO Alexei Miller. On 22nd October 2012, it was announced that Rosneft will take over TNKBP, international apparent company of TNKBP, holding which is the third largest oil company in Russia. BP will receive an exchange of its stake $12.3 billion of cash and 18.5% of Rosneft's share, while ARR will receive $28 billion in cash. According to Rosneft's CEO, Igor Sechin, no discussion had been held on a buyout of minority shareholders in TNK BP Holding. The deal was completed on 22nd March 2013. 
On 15 January 2011, Rosneft and British Petroleum BP announced a deal to develop the East Rhinovo Zemelsky field on the Russian Arctic Shelf between the Yamal Peninsula and Novaya Zemlya Island. As part of the deal, Rosneft was to receive 5% of the BP's shares worth approximately $7.8 billion as of January 2011 and BP would get approximately 9.5% of Rosneft's shares in exchange. According to the deal, the two companies would also create an Arctic Technology Center in Russia to develop technologies and engineering practices for safe Arctic hydrocarbons extraction. The BP Rosneft deal was blocked in international courts by AAR, BP's Russian partners in the TNK BP joint venture, as breaching earlier contractual arrangements between BP and AAR. The TNK BP partners had previously signed a shareholding agreement which stipulated that their Russian joint venture would be the primary corporate vehicle for BP's oil and gas operations in Russia. What would be your overview of Rosneft's current standing and strengths in the market? As you know, Rosneft is a clear leader of the Russian oil and gas industry at this stage. Russia is the world's largest oil producing country and we are um, the largest oil producer in Russian term. Uh, we do produce 120 million tons um, of oil per year. That's about two, two and a half um, um, million barrels of oil equivalent per day. We've come a long way. You know, Rosneft, as you know, has celebrated 15th anniversary this year. Uh, but uh, where, we, where we believe the future of the company lies is uh, becoming a true unchallenged leader of the global oil and gas industry, um, becoming one of the majors. For us, this is a clear strategic priority. This is a clear strategic thrust for the business. And um, you know, taking the company to the next level, becoming a globally diversified uh, energy leader is, is the vision that the company shares. Indeed, you're looking ahead all the way to 2030. What would be the strategic priorities? A global energy company does not evolve overnight and uh, from our side uh, we see ourselves um, investing much more and much better in upstream, um, going to international upstream projects, bringing some of the best technology and know-how of the global oil and gas industry to our resource base in Russia, helping ourselves with our service business and um, um, ensuring its, uh, its standalone capitalization uh, and development is critical. Uh, making sure that we work uh, as a partner of choice for many of the global internationals that do come to Russia uh, is another important dimension of our strategy. It's, it's a combination of things, but as I said, you know, we do have a long-term vision and um, are very focused on fulfilling that to the best of the interest of our shareholders. Indeed, you've touched on your reserves there. That's one of Rosneft's great strengths. What are the highlights there for you? Well, as you know, Rosneft has uh, proven reserves of about 23 billion uh, barrels of oil equivalent. Uh, that's uh, about 26 years for our annual production. Um, that is a unique resource base um, in comparison to any other publicly listed uh, global company. You know, the cost of extracting those reserves is also quite unique. Um, our lifting cost is only about $2.8 per barrel. Um, the capital construction cost for some new projects, if you look at, say, example of OneCore, we construct a project that produces 25 million tons per year for about um, $5.1 um, dollars per barrel uh, of estimated production. So those are some fairly unique numbers in the global context and this, is, um, has, this has been and will be one of the Rosneft's uh, greatest strengths going, going into the future. Since 2004, a series of government auctions have been organized to sell Yuko's assets, the majority being won by Rosneft. On 22 December 2004, Rosneft purchased a little-known Russian oil company called Bekel Finance Group. Three days earlier, the previously unheard of Bekel Group had purchased former Yuko's subsidiary, Yugenskerneft Gaz, Yugunesk, at a state-run auction supposedly to satisfy tax debts. This was viewed by many as a de facto nationalization of Yugunesk and was denounced by Adri Ilarionov, then a senior Putin economic advisor, as the scam of the year. However, despite criticism, the addition of Yangask resulted in Nos Rosneft becoming Russia's second largest producer of oil and gas by 2005, with an average output of 1.69 million BPD. In June 2007, Rosneft paid $731 million for Yuko's transportation assets. Although Yuko's acquisition increased debt considerably, the company still plans to triple refining capacity and expand into China. 
Bogdan Chikov has said the company plans to reduce debt to 30 percent of the total assets by 2010. On January 14, 2006, Rosneft conducted one of the largest initial public offerings, IPO, in financial history after placing nearly 15% of its shares on the Russian trading system, RTS, and the London Stock Exchange, LSE. The offering raised USD 10.7 billion. Shares were priced at $7.55 near the upper end of the range forecast when the IPO was announced resulting in Rosneft being valued at $79.8 billion. Rosneft achieved its objective largely by arranging bilateral deals with strategic investors such as British Petroleum BP, Petronas and CNPC, which bought almost $2.6 billion worth of shares during the IPO. Three Olgi Garks invested over $1 billion each on the LSE Roman Abramovic Vladimir Lisin and Oleg Depripaska, critics of the deal included financier George Soros, who called on investors to boycott it on ethical grounds, and Andrei Ilarionov, who called the deal illegal and a crime against the Russian people because none of the proceeds will go into the state budget. The British Financial Services Authority authorized the flotation of Ros Rosneft shares despite an appeal from UCOS, which claimed that allowing the Rosneft IPO would be tantamount to facilitating the sale of stolen goods. So students, we got to know about the various aspects of Rosneft. We went through the company's history to its present market scenario. Hope you must have got useful information about the company. Have a good day.